So welcome, I will be showing you how to make a draggable part that follows the player with the use of the drag detector and also a line position. So I'm going to be showing two methods. The first one is going to be just the part being in front of the player. So the first thing we need is a script inside of the server script service, which is going to add an attachment to our character. So we get the player service and just connect a function to the player added event. And then connect another one to the player character appearance loaded. So we get the humanoid root part from the player's character. And then we do if humanoid root part, then we just create the attachment instance. And we put it inside of the humanoid root part, and we also need to add it a name. And we can set it to look attachment. So now if we play the game and go into our character, into the humanoid root part, there is going to be the look attachment right here. And then we need to move it a bit in front because we don't want the part to be basically going inside of our character. So we change the C-frame property of an attachment. And the C-frame property works from the center of the base part because the attachment has a C-frame and also the word C-frame. And then we need to add a value in which we want to move the attachment in. So we can make like an offset. And then we need to move it in front of our character. So it's going to be 0 by 0 by minus 5. And then we just apply that position. So now the humanoid root part is going to have the attachment that's going to be in front of our character right there. And we have to move it on the Z axis on minus value because this is the axis of the base part. And here it is on the attachment C frame. So we've got this script done and now we can close it. And now let's move to adding the part. So I can insert a part and just name this one draggable part. And the first thing we need to add is a drag detector. And with the drag detector, we don't really need to do anything except changing few stuff. The drag style is going to be scriptable because we need to script custom logic. And this can be physical because if the drag style is scriptable and I want to use align position, which is also moved by physics, this right here won't correlate with each other. So we need to change it to custom. And there is also this permission policy that I can change to scriptable, so only one person will be able to drag the object. And of course, if you had multiple objects that you wanted to drag, you would probably just put them inside of the tag editor and then just create a tag. And then you would look through the objects that have that tag. But I'm just going to make a script for the sake of this being a shorter tutorial and not a 40 minute video. Basically, the same logic inside of this script. Like I said, you could just put a script inside the service script service and then just look through this object with the tag and then apply that basically logic there. But anyway, let's make references. And this draggable part will also need an attachment. And then we need to create the align position. And then just change some of the settings. First we need to change the parent to be the object. Then we set attachment 0 as the created attachment. We disable the align position. And then we change the responsiveness to like 800. And the responsiveness is basically the speed in which the object is going to be going towards the calculated position. The higher the value, the faster the response. And then we need the drag detector events. One is going to be the drag start. I need to connect a function. And the other one is going to be the drag end. And also the permission policy, which we do by the set permission policy function method. And then we add a function right here. And this function gets the player and the part. Then there is also the drag start, which also needs the player. And we don't really need the player reference in the dragon function. So first thing we need to check if the player that's grabbing the part has a valid character because we need to look for the attachment that we just created inside of this script. And for reference, I'm going to put it right here for now. So first we do character, then we do if not character, then return end. 
then we do the humanoid root part. And same, if not humanoid root part, then return end. And lastly, we need to get the attachment. So we do attachment is equal to find fish child and then the attachment we created, which is the lookout. And if we have the attachment, so we do if attachment then, we set the aligns position that attachment one to be equal to the attachment. And then we also need to enable the align position. And for the drag end function, we need to disable it. And we also need to reset the align position attachment. So now I'm going to show it on how the logic basically works. So we have our character's humanoid root part and we also have this draggable part which has the align position, the attachment and the drag detector. If I press on the align position and then try to hold the part, you can see that the align position is moving the part to the attachment of our character, like this. And even if I move around, the part is going to follow me. And this part is going to constantly try to stay in front of our character. So that's the basically fierce method that we can do. And to showcase it a bit more, I'm going to add different parts. And this one is going to be a wall. And then just few like standing poles. And just so it's a bit easier, I'm going to change this part into a ball instead of a block. And I will unanchor this and do a playtest. So right now when I'm holding the part, it's going to get stuck on these walls right here. Because it's trying to get to me. So it's also going to zoom like this if I move out. And it has the option to basically zoom to me. And then it should also move these parts around. Like so. This one is entirely moved by physics. And this drag is being rendered by the server. But it doesn't move anywhere else if I look, let's say, up and down. And that's going to be the second method. But let me also do something with the permission policy function. So what we can do is to add a attribute to the draggable part. And the attribute is going to be something like the player user ID. And I'm not sure if it works like this 100% because I couldn't test it myself. But there is a snippet of code on the documentation that returns true or false whenever the player is either able to or unable to drag the part. And we are going to base that logic based on the attribute of the part. So what I can do is set an attribute right here. Named current drag. And set it to the player that user ID. And then copy this and in the drag end, I'm just going to set it to nil. And inside of this function, I'm going to do if not object get attribute current drag. Then I'm going to return true. And else I'm going to return false. But that's the code for the Furious method, which allows us to basically just hold the ball that's in front of our character. But I'm also going to show another one that's going to use the view plane. So we will be able to drag the ball up and down. And first thing I need to say, what is a view plane? The view plane is basically the view that you get from your camera. Let's say if I was looking at the 3D world like this, this is going to be the view frame. It's basically how the camera's viewport is rendered inside of the 3D world. So I'm just going to copy this part. And I'm going to just rewrite this script. And inside of this script, we'll also need a drag continue event. Because what this event returns is the player, then the cursor ray, which is a ray, and then our view frame, which is a C frame. Then it also returns the VR input frame and a mode switch key down, which we don't really need. So just to basically show it, I'm going to create a part and set its position as the view frame position. And since the view frame is already a C frame, I can just change this part C frame to the view frame. And I'm going to make this ball green and just add like a glass material so it's easier to distinguish. And right now, if I'm going to continue dragging the part, basically, it's going to create the parts that are going to be set to the view frame of my camera. 
So I'm going to start dragging this one, and for some reason it's not creating them. Oh, that's because I didn't set the parent. Now it should be creating them. Yep. So, yeah, you can see how it's creating basically a part each frame. And the view frame not only works from the first person, but it just gets the camera's position inside of the whole 3D world. So if any, if I drag it from here, it's going to create parts right there. And even if I don't move my camera, it's still going to create parts that are going to be positioned like my camera was. So I hope you understood it. And what you can do instead of this function as an optional method is not have the align position, but instead if let's say your game was in first person, you can just have an offset value like I did in the script. That's right here. That would just move the far to the reference position and then just offset it in front. But then you would probably have to do some raycasting or other logic where you would have to see if the part was basically just going to touch an object and interact with it. Because if I change, let's say, this part position to be on this wall, let me just change its size. So I wanted to move it right there, right? And let's say my character was right here. The part would basically, instead of being there, it would just go inside of this wall right here and then just probably do some glitching. But an alternative, if you want the object to be moved by physics with the allen position, but the thing I can do is basically to just change this attachment's position on the y-axis to be this view frame y-axis of the look vector. And if you don't know what a view vector is, and I'm going to just write it down right here. So this is a C-frame, and a C-frame basically just consists of vectors. The first three letters in a C-frame are the position, so this is the vector position, and the following three are the look vector. So just think of this as the vector in which the part is oriented in. And if you wanted to just change a look vector of a part, we could do part that C frame is equal to, and then C frame that new, and then just add the parts position vector. So we do part that C frame that position, and then follow it with the look vector that we just created. Doing something like this will only change the parts look vector and keep its original position. So the thing we need to do is basically get the attachment from here again. And instead of rewriting this, I'm just going to make another function and just name this one get look at from the player. And this function is going to return an attachment or nothing. And then I can do a local attachment is equal to get look attachment from the player. And then I can do the same inside of the drag continue function right here. So now that we got the attachment, we need to do if attachment again then. And then we just need to change this attachment's position on the y axis. So we do local y is going to be equal to view frame that look vector dot y. And then we do attachment that C frame is going to be equal to C frame that new. And we don't want to change anything except its Y position. So we just do vector P that new, zero, then the Y and the zero. But this Y isn't the exact value that you want. Since the view frame is going to be the center of our camera. And moving this part wouldn't have enough strength because it's a bit further away. So like inside of this script, we had an offset vector. We basically want to multiply this y value by the same value that was inside of this offset right here. And it needs to be positive, because if it's negative, then it's going to be reversed. So we just do it like so. And that's everything. I'm going to just play test it right now. I don't think I did it properly. Wait. So this shouldn't be zero. This should be still the offset value, so minus five. So now if I grab it, it's going to be moved on the y axis as well. And this just applies to my whole camera, basically. But you can also see that it's not really on our cursor. And we kind of need to change it by just adding one value right here. So it's going to be a bit higher. And now I will be able to basically just drag it like so.
and you can see that I am able to drag it instantly unlike last time. And that's because sometimes the Roblox's engine has trouble basically rendering the objects you grab and their physics and it usually needs a bit to basically load all the logic regarding it. So yeah, it basically works like this. And again, if you missed it at the beginning, the drag detector needs to have a custom response style. But yeah, that's going to be everything for today, so if you found this tutorial informative, then please leave a like. You can also subscribe to the channel, but that's going to be everything for today, so thank you guys for watching and see ya.